Broadcasting this online yes. so that the fans all across the world can follow the action live and we're just about to get ready with that Oh, we're already on so hello Eurovision fans around the world I'm Ulla Essendrop and I'm so happy to welcome you all here today three of the meet and greets on the Eurovision Island and right now I have with me here on stage Conchita Wurst from Austria. Hi, Conchita. Oh, so good to have me. you here. Thank you so much. You know, uh, I, I first saw you at the video um, when everybody was announcing which semi final. Yeah. Am I right? True, that's you absolutely look stunning, true. darling. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're so sweet. And may I return the compliment? You look fabulous as always. Thank you so much. Listen, Conchita, you uh, earlier today you completed your first rehearsal yes. on stage. How was everything? Oh my god. It was overwhelming. Seriously, I, I sang three times, so for technical things and all that stuff. And after the first time, there was a bit of a waiting, and I stood there and I looked around, and I, I just thought, now you're here. This, this, is a very, this is very serious to me and a very, very big dream. And I, I stood there and immediately, the water in my eyes and my, my nose was <laughs> snorkeling. <laughs> and I thought, keep it together now, you have to sing. So really, this is very, very big for me and I'm, I'm just so honored and everybody does an amazing job and it's really incredible being here. Oh, that's fantastic to hear. Now listen, um, I'd like to throw in a bit of social media in the mix here because uh, viewers can ask questions via the hashtag Ask Eurovision. And boy, are there many questions for you. Robin K. AX asks, what do you want people to feel when they hear your song? Well, I think Rise Like a Phoenix is a song, um, actually, I, I think everybody can relate on because it's, it's, it's a story about going through bad times and struggle with difficult things and grow out of it and hopefully become a better person. So I think everybody got this experience. For me, of course, it's so close to, to my life and not just in an optic way but also in just you know emotionally growing up and and we are keep growing and i think so hopefully the people will will feel that so this is a very personal message for you it is it is you know i created this bearded lady uh, that i wanted to show the world that you can do whatever you want you know it's not about the color of your skin it's not about where you're from and it's if you want to be a bearded lady, you are allowed to do that because I'm not hurting anyone and that's the thing. If you're not hurting anyone, you can, you can do whatever you want with your life. And it's so cheesy, but we just got one. So you better have a happy one, I think. Another question. Wow. Another question from PSC Hart. What will you wear in the semi-final and the final? Will you change your dress as, as a phoenix in the show? <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> no, I will. I will um, wear a beautiful gown. Um, I designed it myself because I have a fashion background. And well, what can I say? It sparkles like the sun. What a surprise! <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be the Eurovision without sparkle. Would yes, it? I, I agree. Right, right. Um, Heidi Berenquil asks a question that you've already kind of mentioned it already, but uh, she asks, how do you feel about? representing your country in the largest music competition in the world. It's, it's unbelievable, as I said before, you know. Uh, you, you dream of being part of this and, and, well, now I am and this is, just, this is just overwhelming and I have actually no words for that because I really try to give, I will give everything I have and this is, uh, I really mean it because as I said before, at the rehearsals, I really had a tough time putting it together. So hopefully I will <laughs> not burst into tears instead of singing uh, on the semi-final. It would be not that good. But yeah, I'm just really, really, really thankful and happy to be here. Mm. Last questions from, from Ask Eurovision hashtag. 
from ESC Ramadan, who asks, do you have a motto that you live by? Oh yes, I do. I have not just one, but I think the most important thing for me is <coughs> I work that way. I need big, big, big goals. And actually, I, I reached one today. And I always say, it's, it's a very nice sentence from Les Brown, and it says, um, shoot for the moon, even if you miss, you land among the stars. And that's, that's actually the way I live, you know, just think big and, and create your, your life however you want it and you will, you will get something good, and even if it's not the moon. Fantastic, what a great message. Thank you. Well, I'm sure many of you have questions, there's already one here down here. I think we can give this gentleman a microphone, please. Hi, hi, Gunchida. I'm Simon from Poland. Poland actually is on the stage just before you. Yes. And uh, <laughs> tell me, because I mean, uh, to our entry, my friend from Sweden, for instance, he claims that we are too sexist on the stage. <laughs> from the other side, we have you, of course, appreciating your vocal, your wonderful song, your fantastic relations with press. Some people claim that uh, your performance, you as a drama queen, mm. is a little bit of an exaggeration. Could you tell, what could you tell, what could be a message from those who have these extreme opinions? Well, first I have to say I love the Polish entry, because I really, you know, I'm not very into boobs, but this video works. <laughs> <laughs> it's just great. <laughs> it is sexy. And I really enjoy that. And of course, there were some, some, you know, statements about my appearance at the Eurovision Song Contest, and I really have to say that it just shows me that I'm on the right way, and that we ha still have to talk about this. And I, I don't really get it, you know, because in my world, it's not important how you, who you love, and it's not important if you if you have a beard or not, because it's just not very, you know, it's just the little facial hair and nothing more. And as I said, above it all, it's, I don't get why people are pay that much, much intention, attention to something they don't like. So, mm. thank you for your time. I think that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, gentleman in the jacket, hi. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm from, uh, my name is Jacob Ryzen, I'm from uh, Eurovision Nude. Um, I have, I'm a little confused because uh, a lot of rumors, a lot of, a lot of people say she, and some say he, and, mm -hmm. but uh, how does it work? Do you have, uh, like, I don't know how to say it, do you have... Uh, and also ego? Of course. Do, do no, I know what you're going for. <laughs> Listen, I'm a drag artist. I always no, say... No, 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 sorry. no, no, no. Let, me, let me finish. I know what you're going for, because you're just true. No, no, I mean shoes. Do, do you have shoes? Sorry. Do you have uh, like uh, uh, female shoes or lady shoes when I you go? I have everything in my closet. <laughs> okay. I, I but what about, uh, I mean, just by the size, how do you get female shoes? I have Your very size? small feet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's why all the drag sisters hate me, because I have the same feet. And women must be jealous as well. <laughs> I, would, I would love to have that size and that body. Thank now, you. another question over here, yes? Um, yes, you? Hi, Conchita. I'm Hi. from the Netherlands, Dutch Television, mm -hmm. SBS6 Show News. Mm -hmm. um, Conchita, I um, respect the way you look, what you're singing, and the message you're sending out all over Europe. Mm -hmm. But aren't you afraid that in more conservative parts of Europe, they don't understand what you mean and how you look? Well, uh, first of all, that's why I keep on saying it that uh, everybody gets it, but I know, I know that this, is, this could be, you know, and it is, it's not just a problem, it's a fact that most of the people don't really get it. And as I said before, it just shows me that I'm on, on, on the right way and that we have to keep on talking about that. And I get, I get this question a lot if, if, because I was traveling around since September and everybody, especially in Austria, asked me if the people out of Austria more tolerance or not. And I have to say, you know, in this particular case, I can't answer it in a very objective way because people invite me and they want to see me, so obviously they are nice. But 
I don't think that it depends on a country if you are tolerant or not. So there, even in Austria, there are people who like what I do. So I don't depend it on a country. I think I think the message is pretty clear by now. So uh, any questions about the competition, the music, and the whole song? Yes, some in, in the background. There's a gentleman in the background. No, no. So f first, the gentleman in the background. We'll get to you afterwards, sir. Yeah. Hi, Conchita. My company is ecas.com. Um, there's another contestant that you have quite a close relationship, which is Ruth Lorenzo from Spain. You're both the Kardashian sisters. I'd like to know which one you actually are. I'm Kim. Okay, that's oh. fine. Thank you very much. Okay, so that was a question down here. Yes, sir, you? In, in the show? Much. Hello, my darling. Hello, darling. Hi, uh, Conchita. It's Gareth here from Eurovision Ireland. Of Handsome as always. <laughs> Hashtag you're fabulous. <laughs> um, firstly, I'm going to start off by saying you were amazing today. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, uh, yes, really uh, you looked amazing. So I sort of felt that I needed to do something for you. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a strip tease for you. <laughs> Okay. This is what I like. <laughs> it's all for you, baby. <laughs> this is so oh, great. I've seen those on Twitter. Ah. Oh. And I have one for you. You have one for me. I have one for you. Oh, that's great. Wearing my head on my body, great. So can, you, can you give that to Kuchita, please? Thank you so much. Kuchita, right. I know that we have said because when we've met several times, that the ultimate goal is to win a Grammy. <laughs> and if not, we're going to steal one from Celine Dion. We've agreed on that. I will grab it. And we will grab yeah. it. We will grab it. Yes. Okay. Today, do you think you really took a step forward in that journey, on that road, to being the artist and performer that you want to be? Well, oh my God. Um... I hope that it's, it's a step in the right direction, but I, actually now I'm focusing on what's going on right here. <laughs> but of course, as I said, it's just, I've never been on such a huge stage. And it, my imagination that all the chairs are full is just unbelievable. And I, I, hopefully it's not the last time I'll be on such a huge no, stage. If you can indulge uh, excuse me. Excuse me, so, no, sorry, so we have to pass the microphone on because there's so many questions here as well. Yeah, yes, you with, with the brace, bracelets on. Hi, my name is Olivier from www.pinhype.com.dk. <laughs> <laughs> you look stunning. Oh, you look fantastic. What a great well. style. <laughs> Anyways, so there is a, I, I just want to ask you there have been a lot of comments, among others, from your Eurovision fillers, you know, not homophobic comments. And I just want to ask, does that affect your performance? How, how, how do you feel about being in a competition with people with such a narrow mind? Well, um, no. N nobody got the power to affect me on my performance, no one. Um, of course, this particular case is very much discussed in the, in the last weeks, and I said, well, he apologized, and it's fine for me. But I have to say he apologized that he, by saying it was a joke and bad translation and so on. And I have to say, even if it's, if it's a joke, it's not funny. And that's, and that's the point. But he apologized, and that's fine for me. I think he learned his lesson. Mm. OK, we have only time for a very few questions, so better make them good ones. France, down here in the front row. Back. Yeah. Hello Conchita, I'm Frau from France. Uh, the last two years was not good results for Austria. Uh, what do you have that makes uh, Austria have better results than the last two years? Oh, we will see. If I reach the <laughs> final, then there is something. But now I don't know if I have something more than the others. You know, I always say that the Eurovision Song Contest 
is so, how can I say, you, you don't know if you got the right song. You know, everything, I think every song got the potential to win because you never know what the audience wants this year. So we will see. Yeah, we you will see. Gentlemen here in the front, a microphone for you. Uh, Hi, honey. Hello. Uh, I'm Sasha from Eurovision Austria. Nice to have you here. I just want to ask a uh, complete other questions. Uh, the first step is uh, Rise Like a Phoenix. And do you prepare some album or are there some idea about the other songs or to hear more about you? Well, there's a big problem with my album because I love so many different music styles. And it's not that easy to put a pussycat song beside a Celine Dion song, you know what I mean? So I, this don't really works out. So I, I, I try something new and I try to go single by single. And after 12 years, I have a full album. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, it's a puzzle, isn't it? I'm so sorry. I know that many of you have so many questions you want to ask, but time flies here and it's only 20 minutes per act. So we're going to wrap it up here and to all the Eurovision fans online, thanks so much for watching. We'll be back in uh, approximately 20 minutes with Lithuania and Vilja. And don't forget, you can ask the artist questions via the hashtag AskEurovision on Twitter. Thanks so much, I'll see you soon.